The entrance to our indoor growing area is right behind this door. Let's check it out. To our indoor growing space. Now, I'm standing right in front of our Vivasun grow tent, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour and talk about some of the things that you need to be aware of if you're considering or planning to do some indoor gardening this year. I think it's going to be a nice overview of some of the things that you can consider and also give you an opportunity to reach out, ask questions, and see which of these topics you'd like to hear more about. And in addition to that, today is day one of our 31 days of Guten Gardening, Gardening Gift Giving series, where we're giving away something each of the next 31 days. And so we're gonna tell you who our first winner was today. But let's go ahead and take a look at our indoor growing space. You know, when you're considering growing indoors, and we do think that this is a very valuable pursuit, we've done a lot of content over the last two years about growing indoors, but when you're considering it, one of the things you have to keep in mind is just how much space you can allocate and then what that layout is gonna look like. Now, I would say we're pretty fortunate in that we have over 100 square feet indoors that we can dedicate to growing, to gardening. And I know not everybody has that. You may have just a small counter space upstairs. You may have an even bigger space than we do. But location and space definitely matters when it comes to deciding how you're going to grow indoors. For one thing, if you're growing in an area that has lots of nice big windows, you're going to get some of that indirect light coming in. And even though that might not be enough light for your plants, well then that changes the way you have to think about your grow lights. For us, we're growing in an area of our house that doesn't have any natural light coming in, so our grow lights are really essential to the gardening process. And when we talk about space, you have to understand that you're going to be at least somewhat limited in what you can grow depending on the amount of space that you can allocate. Now, there are plenty of different types of containers that you can use indoors. For us, I have a nice DIY raised bed, and we've been growing all kinds of greens and potatoes in here. Now, of course, not everybody has room for a raised bed indoors, but there are a ton of other options out there. You know, maybe you need to go vertical with something like this green stalk vertical garden where we're growing indoors and getting multiple tiers that take up a whole lot less space. We also have some nice food safe buckets that we're going to be growing in this season. Now, by the way, these buckets are awesome for many reasons. One, they're food safe. Two, we got them for free. And the way we got them for free was to go to our local grocery store bakery. And you know they use a lot of icing and cream cheese. Well, if you ask them, and we found this to be true, we've got probably nine buckets so far. If you ask them if they have any buckets they're going to recycle, I would try to do it earlier in the day before they actually take them out to recycle. You get your hands on some free growing containers. You can also grow in grow bags. You can grow in other pots that you may have used. We also grow on shelves like here in our Ogro greenhouse that we have. So there's tons of options for you when it comes to the amount of space that you have. And there are options when it comes to the type of media you want to grow in. Now, most of the time we use a nice loose soilless mix that we create. There's a nice worm in there, a red wiggler. And we'll be sure to talk about the construction of that mix in future videos. But we've also done some work with the cracky hydroponic method. And so there are multiple ways that you can attempt to grow indoors. It doesn't have to be a potting mix or anything like that. There are certainly other ways. Now, I mentioned the importance of lights when it comes to your growing space. But one of the things we don't want you to do is to allow the cost of lights to be the reason why you don't garden indoors. Because there are definitely fancier lights like this Mars Hydro. Look at that. I can turn up the brightness. I can dim it all from this one single light. It's really nice, high quality light. But there are other cheaper options out there as well that can still give you some nice results depending on the size of what you're trying to grow. I mean, we've been growing with this hydro planet that has T5 bulbs for the past four plus years. Not that expensive and we get great results. We even have high bay lights that we spent about $60 on out here in our area outside the grow tent and they've done great for us as well. I will say that I think we have a ton more to learn about lights and so this is a learning process for sure. But again, don't let lights be the reason why you don't get started growing indoors. You know, I really love this three by three raised bed. The last two seasons we've been growing in it, we've done some pretty cool stuff. But one of the things you have to remember whenever you're growing indoors is you're not gonna have any of that natural rainfall. So 
watering is going to be completely up to you and not nature. So you have to have a plan in place. Are you gonna water from your faucet? Or if you're in the winter like us, you're gonna go outside, maybe collect the snow, bring it in, let it melt and water using that. I, mean, I can speak from personal experience that when we water just from the water of our faucets, it's not as good quality, but also we get some buildup on the leaves. So again, water, something you have to keep in mind. You know, one thing I'm standing in here and I'm starting to get a little bit warm and that brings me to heat because some of these lights really send off a lot of heat and it really depends on the type of light the type of bulb that you have as well so that's something else to keep in mind i mean it's kind of nice that you can control the temperature you can do a pretty good job of controlling the temperature indoors unlike outdoors where you're kind of at the whim of nature but a little light like this light time tunnel i mean you can hear the fan the fan is pumping but these lights underneath here they get pretty warm. So depending on the type of light you have, you have to take the heat of the light into account as you're growing. You know, if a light really casts off a whole bunch of heat, you're not going to want it right down on top of the plants because you don't want to burn the plants. And heat is something that we keep track of every single day. Now, there are lots of different types of thermometers that you can buy. I would recommend one that also has the hygrometer because the secondary piece that you want to measure is the humidity. By the way, if that temperature looks a little bit low to you when I just said I was hot, it's because I just brought this one into the room because, again, we're just starting back up. Now, when it comes to humidity, there is supposed to be an ideal range somewhere between 40 and 70 percent. But while we track humidity, it's not something that we've necessarily strived to adjust a lot in the past. But I do know that all of our vegetables have different needs at different parts of their life cycle. And so it's a good idea to know your humidity. If it gets too low or too high, you can certainly have some problems with that. All right, folks, before we go any further, let's go ahead and get that first giveaway winner. We had over 50 comments on our initial 31 days of Guten Gardening, gardening gift giving video. And they were all so wonderful. We love seeing each one of those. We're gonna to get to responding to those shortly. And we also added anyone who commented on our December 1st post about seeds and our November 29th post about garden gifts. Now, for those of you who are brand new to this, this is how we pick our winners for our giveaways. We've added every single one of those names and this list is only gonna get bigger as more and more people join in. And what is it? that we're giving away today. We're giving away this seed spacing template for those of you who are interested in square foot gardening or just wanna know the proper spacing for your seeds. This is an incredible tool. Very simple to use and very efficient when it comes to planting your seeds. All right, without any further ado whatsoever, let's go ahead and find out who our first winner is in these 31 days of gardening gift giving. I'm so excited. Let's see, our first winner is Marlene Shenick. And I hope I said your name correctly. Marlene, congratulations. We are so happy for you. And for those of you who are watching this video, go ahead and give congratulations to Marlene for this first win. Marlene, we'll leave a comment letting you know you won. Your name will also be in our community section. Now we do have some citrus growing in here like our tangerine, and down here we have part of our dragon fruit. We have two pieces of it now because we cut this one off, and I noticed a little bit of dirt here on the top, and it made me think, because it kind of had that same look, about some of our pests. Because where there's a will, there's a way with pests. They are not natural to your indoor growing area. You're gonna find if you're bringing plants indoors, for example, the possibility and probability of bringing in pests if you're not quarantining or not cleaning them properly is actually pretty high. And the three main pests we've dealt with the most are fungus gnats, ants, and our nemesis aphids. But we have ways that we can deal with that naturally, but just know that you, even though you're not growing outdoors, may have to deal with some of those garden pests. Well, hopefully you're getting a feel for the space here. I'm not being too specific because I don't wanna show you everything all at once, but you can kind of see the amount of space that we're working with in here, and I think that's important. And that leads me to one final thing here before we get to the winner of day number one. This really nice raised bed has not been grown in since the end of last winter. 
And if we're trying to keep our soil alive and fertile with lots of great organisms in there, that's not the best way to go. We're gonna to try to do a better job of that in the future of keeping things growing in here all the time. It's just, we've been so focused on our outdoor garden up to this point. But there are ways that we can come in here and really revitalize and add nutrients back to these beds to really get them ready for some bumper crops, including taking some of our worm castings that we're getting in our vermiculture setup, getting some of that worm compost tea and really just reintroducing life on top of adding in some of our solids or even our liquid organic fertilizers. So that's something to talk about, the difference in terms of the release time of nutrients between solid and liquid fertilizers. But again, that's for a different video. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this indoor garden tour. Congratulations again to our day one winner. Stay tuned for day two. We've got 31 of these. This is gonna be a great indoor series. I think you're gonna enjoy yourself. I think you're gonna learn a lot and we hope you're growing indoors with us. Even if it's the smallest space you have, try growing something indoors this season. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.